This episode of The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by IVAC. Today I want to introduce you guys to a product line from a company called IVAC. They approached me a few months ago to work together to automate my dust collection, and I already had a remote control system, but the concept of automating it so that I basically turn a tool on, the dust collector turns on, and that blast gate opens, and then all the other blast gates will close, that just sounds awesome to me. Uh, their motto is basically health, safety, and convenience. And those are three things I'd like to have a little bit more of in my shop if possible. So let me show you some of the product line here and then we'll actually do the install. Now, if you're just getting into this concept of automation, this is probably where you want to start. It's the IVAC switch box. Uh, this basically powers one tool and one dust collector. In this way, every time you turn the tool on, the dust collector turns on. Now, if you have a larger ducted dust collection system, you might want to look into these blast gates. Right, so I've got a plastic version and a metal version, and I believe they have them in four and six inch sizes. And this is what we'll be installing today is a metal four inch blast gate. Uh, these are incredibly cool. Basically, you've got a piece of metal in here that slides in and out. You also have little windows that tell you if it's open or this one will turn red when it's closed and you can manually push it to open or close or keep it in auto. There's also a little uh, wired remote you can connect if you need to, and of course you gotta give this guy a little bit of power. Uh, but ultimately, it's a very durable system. You can see it's very well made, and I'll be able to incorporate this into my metal ductwork pretty easily. Now, the communication between the system is wireless. You do have to give it power, but we've got a tool sensor here. So these guys get paired together, and whenever this guy, which gets attached to the, the tool's wire itself, whenever it senses that power is going to the tool, it will turn the blast gate on, or essentially open the blast gate and close the rest of the blast gates in the system. Uh, additionally, we have a standard remote uh, that can just kind of turn it on and off as needed if you want to do something to bypass this system. Now before I get to the install, I want to take a quick disclosure break. I think it's really important now more than ever for content creators to explain their relationship with the companies in plain English. So in this case, working with IVAC, they sent me all of the product I needed to install here in the shop, and then they paid a fee on top of that for us to have this video made. All right, I don't know what difference that makes to you. Hopefully you trust me to begin with uh, because I don't put anything in my shop that I don't want in my shop. Uh, so let's get to the install. The first step is to install the switch. On the back is a small access panel where we can modify the dip switch to configure the system. The first two switches define the system address. All components in the system will be set to this same address. Here we can also set the turn off time once all of the tools are powered down. The switch is the part that receives the signals from the tools and turns the collector on and off. Because my 5 horsepower cyclone draws too much power for the switch, a special contactor is added into the mix. Once wired up, the switch plugs directly into the wall. The contactor then plugs into the switch, and the 220 volt plug from the contactor plugs into the wall. Now let's set up a blast gate. Notice the control switch has three settings, open, auto, and closed. I'll leave it on auto. The blast gate also has a ground that can be used to help discharge static. The first two numbers in the dip switch are for the system address. The third position determines how long the blast gate will stay open after the tool is turned off. And the last three are there to pair the blast gate and the Pro Tool sensor. On the sensor, we also have an auto, off, and on button. The dip switch then gets set to the correct system address, and the last three numbers are set for the same numbers we set the blast gate to. This pairs them together as a unique pair. There's also a dial that can be used to adjust the sensitivity when detecting whether the tool is on or off. I set up eight of these in my shop and none of them required this adjustment, but I'm glad the dial is there. Now I'll do a test run just using a jigsaw. The Pro Tool sensor first gets attached to the power cable of the saw. By the way, the clip on this unit can be rotated and adjusted to fit various cable thicknesses. With the sensor powered up, I can test it out by turning on the jigsaw. The light tells me it's working. Now let's put the blast gate into the mix by giving it some power. When the tool turns on, the blast gate opens. I set the switch to turn the dust collector off 45 seconds after the last tool turns off. This gives me enough time to turn on another machine without cycling the dust collector on and off repeatedly. The blast gate is set to close after 50 seconds, giving the dust collector enough time to pull any remaining dust after the woodworking operation has stopped. Now we'll test it in a real setup at my jointer. The tool turns on, blast gate opens, and the cyclone powers up. 
And by the way, in case you were worried about damaging the system by having all the gates closed, this system is designed to always leave at least one gate open. Installing the entire system took me about four hours, but much of that was spent reconfiguring the ductwork slightly to accommodate the larger blast gates. Now, I tend to be a pretty geeky person. My entire house has smart home switches and things like that. Uh, most of the things in my house are controlled via some kind of an app. I love this stuff. So the thought of being able to automate some things in my workshop is really, really appealing to me. Uh, but whether you are a small shop hobbyist and you go for something like the basic switch or you do a full ducted system, they've kind of got the ground covered for you. Uh, now one sort of word of warning is each one of these systems, if you install it like I did, uh, you've got the, the sensor, the Tool Plus, uh, as well as the blast gate itself. Both of those require power. So wherever you have the tool, you're going to have two additional plugs to plug in. So it's something to consider when you're actually setting everything up. Also get yourself a bunch of little zip ties or a little um, twisty tie things because you're going to have more wires around your power tools and you want to make sure those are contained and organized so that it doesn't uh, flop around and get in the way of the tool. Uh, so special thanks to IVAC for working with us on this and uh, hopefully you'll be able to dive into this automation stuff because it really does make life in the shop healthier, safer, and more convenient.